So there are so many people that talk about goal setting and all the steps that you need to take to be successful in your goal setting and to achieve your goals. But what a lot of people don't talk about is the mental endurance that it needs to take. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, check out the video and stay tuned. I'm Dr. Vernita Glenn White. I go by Dr. V, and I am your brilliant life strategist and advisor. Some people like to say life coach or executive coach, but hey, I'm here. I do all those things for high achieving women in the professional space and the entrepreneurial space as well. So, this is part three of a five part series. So, go check out videos one and two, where we already talked about the courage it takes to achieve your goals and then how to be detail oriented about your goals. This is all about how to jumpstart your mind to jumpstart your goal, especially for the overachievers and high um, high achievers and the highly ambitious. So getting into part three, the mental endurance. And if you can't wait for all of the series to unfold, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the, the five steps now, and then just know that we'll be going to more detail as I unfold each step. All right, so part one was courage. Part two is being detail oriented. Three is having the mental endurance, what we're talking about today. Part four is being resilient about your goals. And then part five is focusing on perfection of your goals. And that one is a little controversial. So you might want to wait to the end of the series to hear about that video. More about mental endurance. Have you ever gone to a gym and seen like really buff people, men and women, male or female, and they look really, really strong, but if they had to run real quick or if they had to run on the treadmill, they would be out of breath. Not all of them, but I've seen some, they look really buff, have really nice bodies, but their endurance is like trash, right? And that's because they, that's the muscle that they don't work on. A lot of bodybuilders, and not all of them, but just a few that I've seen, they don't really focus on building up their cardio. It's all about the muscle gain and the mass and how they look. But the athletes who are more toned and they don't have as much mass, they do understand the importance of cardio like athletes, like football players um, and basketball players, especially the ones who you know have the definition. They do focus on cardio because they have to keep up, you know, their breathing and things like that. And so there are certain, there are different exercises that you do to gain strength and build mass. And then there are different exercises that you do to make sure you increase your endurance. Runners, you'll see a lot of runners who are very slim and trim because they focus on long-term endurance, like running and um, things that pump up their heart rates and their cardio and work on their breathing, but they don't have a lot of muscle gain, you know? So just think about that. I want to give you that visual so you understand what I'm talking about for mental endurance. I believe a lot of high achievers, overthinkers, <laughs> uh, people who are top performers at uh, top of their A game, we, we have the mental endurance to we have we we know how to like let's say lift the weights when it comes to intellect or our our jobs our careers our business but when it comes to the goals that are probably outside of that realm because I um, mean if you didn't hear me in the first video I talk about or in my life coaching video like how to um, hire a life coach focus on multiple areas of your life sometimes there are five some people focus on eight um, I talk about nine environments, but I really like to focus on the 12 um, environments of, of your life. And sometimes you don't have the muscles to do those certain things. Like maybe it's creativity, maybe it's parenting, maybe it's networking, maybe it's relationships, you know. So wherever you're not excelling, that's where your, your muscle is weak. Now, let's say that you've worked on that muscle to achieve the goal. Let's say that we'll take, we'll take career. You know, you're used to that. You've done all the things. You've gone to school. You've done the trainings. You've climbed up the corporate ladder. But then let's say you've gotten there, but you don't know how to stay there. That's part of mental endurance. Like, okay, I got the goal, but how do I keep that there? And it's all about your, your mindset. Remember, this series is about how to jumpstart your mindset before you jumpstart and achieve your goals. And you can do achieve your goals. You can set goals at any time of the year. So let's say that you're up there, you're in 
the VIP space, you did all the things to get there, but now you're doubting yourself. It's like, well, should I be here? Or did I do all the right things? Or um, this happened so quickly, am I gonna fall so quickly? Now that's now that's the, the mind work that you have to do, the mental endurance that you have to do to stay in that direction. And then maybe, you know, the, the next part of what you need to do is go for the CEO position, right? And it's like, well, I did all the things I needed to go to get to VIP, but going from VIP to CEO, that's going to take a different skill set. That's a, It's not really a different muscle per se, because it's in the same realm, but it does take maybe a different exercise to build up that endurance. I wanted to paint that picture so you can see what, it, what I'm talking about as it relates to achieving your goal. Five ways to do that. And you'll notice there, there will be some overlap from each series because these things don't happen in isolation. So they will be building upon each other. And I may repeat certain things. You know, you're like, well, I thought that was for part two, but you said it again in part three. Yes. One is to read a I reiterate what I said, but then also to show you that you don't do things in isolation, especially when you're achieving goals that are like way beyond what you think is possible. You had the desire, so it's definitely possible, but you have to work your way up to really believing that it's possible for you. So I did talk about this and being detail oriented. Map out your steps. You can have the best software to do to be productive. You can have your planners. You can put it on the wall, put it on your phone, put it on your tablet. I'm, I won't list any actual softwares. Pretty much any software work if you actually work it. So it's not, it, the magic isn't always in the in the software, but you need something to really track and that you can actually see where you are going and how much you've accomplished. So I remember when I started doing 5Ks, I haven't done them in like two years, but I used to run 5Ks, 10Ks, and I think my longest one was a 15K. I didn't set out to run that. I used this app one time, I think it was Couch to 5K, so C to 5K, and it would show you the progress that you're making um, along the way to to the 5k because in your mind running a 5k could seem like a huge goal and you're like I don't know how to do that but if you're starting running a little bit every day I think it was like you know walk for one minute run for one minute then it was like walk for one minute run for two minutes walk for one minute run for five minutes you know or run for five minutes walk for one so it will build up your endurance and then you would gradually see your progress and then before you know it you're running the entire 5k same thing with your goals. Once you've already mapped it out, then actually track it and look. Don't always look so far ahead. It's like, oh my gosh, it's, like, it's gonna take me forever to get there, especially if you've mapped out 22 benchmarks or 22 steps and you're like, man, I'm on step two. But if you're like, okay, from step two to step five, then step seven, I can look back and say, whoa, I've accomplished this. And then that'll keep you motivated to continue forward. That helps you build the endurance. So being able to track it, being able to see it, I like to physically see sometimes. I will write things on a on a um, calendar or you know how they used to have if they're raising money, they would do the thermometer and things like that because it's like you can build up that morale, that confidence booster that you're actually running towards something. And then it'll keep you more motivated because it's like sometimes you don't feel internally motivated, but if you know that you have something that you want to cross out or scratch, you know, or, you know, mark, then that that's like that internal push to get you to um, stay focused on your goal. All right. So that was a long way to say <laughs> track it right out the, the steps, but then actually find a way to track it, whether it's boxes, X's, shades, color code, whatever the case may be. The reason why um, I say do that in case you're still like not thinking of if it's worth you doing it to help you achieve your goals, especially as an overthinker <laughs> and a high achiever. A lot of you went to college or did some sort of training after high school. And it was like, well, this is the degree you're going to get, or this is the certificate you're going to get, but these are all the classes you have to take. And then within the classes, these are all the assignments that you have to take. And I'll use college because that's what I'm most familiar with. When you get a bachelor's degree, it takes about four years to get it. And it could be overwhelming to like, oh my gosh, four years, how am I going to do that? But the reason why you're, a lot of us were able to endure that and have that mental endurance is because each year was broken down, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Then the, the, each year was broken down by semester. Each semester was broken down by class. Each class was broken down by assignment. So you had these benchmarks that you actually checked off along the way. So it's like, okay, you're steadily making progress. And then one day you look up, you're in your junior year. You're like, all right. Then you're in your last semester of your senior year. And you stop focusing on, oh gosh, it's going to take four years to finish. 
So that's another reason why to write out the plan and then physically track your plan. So that was steps one and two within this mental endurance. Number three, and this is, it's, it's not even hard to do, but we don't do it. It's to celebrate yourself for every single step. We are under celebrated as a society. We don't, especially as high achievers and overthinkers and uh, superstars and highly ambitious, it's all about going to the next, always going to the next. But how many of us actually have taken the time to stop and say, whoa, I did the doggone thing. You know what? I worked out three times this week. Who yay me. My goal was three. I did three. I'm so, you, you may not even make it to the three. Let's back up. I worked out today. I'm going to celebrate myself and, and say congratulations to myself. And it doesn't have to be food or buying yourself anything. It can be simple as a high five, pat on the back or saying, yay, go me. But some form of acknowledgement because our brains are wired for achievement and what you celebrate gets repeated. Okay. And I think a lot of us burn out in the goal setting or trying to do something outside of our careers and in our business is because our brain is like, well, you're only going to focus on this. So why should I do something anyway? When we try to do something over here we and I did good, you didn't say good job. So I think you don't want to keep doing that. But you seem to celebrate yourself every time you get a promotion or a pay raise or a new client or a new customer. So we're going to keep doing that. But when we worked out five times last week, you were just like, oh, okay, and then you fell off the wagon one day you beat yourself up so we're not going to do that so celebrate yourself every single step of the way and that's going to keep your endurance up that's going to keep your confidence up that's going to keep your drive up and it, like i said even the days that you don't feel like doing something knowing that the reward you get is even scratching it off you know the list of shading in a box that's going to help you keep that endurance and then celebrating yourself at the end of you can do it at the end of the week if you don't want to do it every time you do something but if you're under celebrated and you're not used to doing something then you won't i would suggest you start doing it every single mic micro win and don't wait for the macro win like every little need a point move celebrate it until you your brain is like okay we can do this i know that we're gonna do something at the end of the week i wouldn't go past the week you know so i wouldn't say oh, i'm gonna celebrate myself at the end of the month I would at least every week celebrate yourself for accomplishing something. Now, number four in keeping up your mental endurance to achieve your goals is to find an accountability partner. Now, you may have watched some of my videos where I was like, I'm not too fond of accountability partners all the time because they can fall off. But when you get a true accountability partner and you can, there's a system, I believe in systems, strategies, and structure. I have an accountability partner accountability partner and we have uh it's almost like an agenda of how we're going to set up this meeting it's not about i mean we do get together and talk and things like that but we handle business first so if you don't, if you have an accountability partner or partners in a group and you have a, a, a strategy or a structure of how you do those meetings great but accountability partner is not like hey did you do your goal no nah, girl i didn't i didn't do it oh man you know, it, it's not about that. You need to find people say, okay, hold you accountable. You didn't achieve it. Why not? What are you planning on doing it? And if you do this, you know, after two calls, like, are you really serious? You need somebody who's going to check you. Right. So it's not just a, a kumbaya session. Right. But then also celebrate in that and then be around people who are not going to shrink because you're winning. So I'm giving you a real life example at the time of this video my accountability partner we've been talking about you know increasing our reach and TikTok, and so i have like 101 followers right now and she had like 100 and something but she's been more diligent about doing certain things before me and she asked me how to do this one trend and i told her and she took off and now she's over at a thousand followers just that quick and not me but i was so happy for her and i was like girl you've been putting in the work i'm so happy for you you know because this is what you said you wanted to do now i could have been like oh man i ain't hit my numbers but then this goes back to those other things that i talked about did i show up how i was going to not in this moment i do have a plan for that but she just happened to do it first and you know she's been on it and she's been checking in with me you know things like that so you want to have an accountability partner who's not going to shrink when you have success and then you don't shrink when they have success if you're not down with the accountability partners if you're like me because it's like they never stick around then join a community that's centered around accountability you know sometimes i'm like mm, about those two unless they're small enough or to where i can find my little pockets within that community or 
sometimes you just need to be in that community because maybe the lead person always gives the inspiration and the things you need to be attached to that and that may work for you. Or join a mastermind where you actually invest money <laughs> to be in the group because a lot of times, and that's what I, I was like, that just works for me. I just invest in high-end masterminds and that way I know everyone is there at the same level or higher than me. People are causing me to stretch and I'm causing people to stretch and that's just what it is. So I have my accountability partner, which is my business bestie. And then I have high-end mastermind groups that I'm in, but find out what works for you. Either way, be in a community that's going to keep you going, okay? So number five is, is really, again, a lot of this is really in your mind. Remember that you've accomplished long-term goals before. I gave you the example of going to college or you know, seeking out a, a promotion that may have taken years to accomplish, like going to school, you, you graduated, <laughs> you, you got a degree, or you finished that certification program, you got that promotion, and it probably took you uh, a long time to do it, but then, you know, you're there. But then if you self-reflect and look back over what you did, you've accomplished a long-term goal before, so you do have the mental endurance. Now again, that you're gonna hear this running thing, now it's time to transfer that skill set to another goal that may not have been in your perceived zone of genius. These are really talking about the goals that causes you to stretch yourself, your secret goals, the, the desires that you really have, but you haven't put the energy towards them because of all this other stuff that we're talking about removing those excuses out of the way with these tips and strategies, because I do want you to achieve those big, scary, audacious, hairy goals. What is it? BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goals, whatever that is. I want you to achieve those, but you have to jumpstart your mind before you can jumpstart that goal. All right, so let me know which tip resonated with you down below and then share your favorite tip on how you build up your mental endurance for you. So thank you so much for listening and, and learning with me. If you are interested in hearing those steps that I took at a deeper level, you can check out my book, Embracing Grit for Greatness. It is available on Amazon. Be sure to go there and type out Embracing Grit for Greatness because that helps with you know, some other things. And then if you are like, okay, I got the book or I don't know if I want to read the book, you can check out my complimentary life class. And that information will be down below. And in the meantime, remember to be well, be empowered, be bold and be brilliant. Until next time. Bye.